I think what Elon's seeing is in three to five years from now, there's going to be a bottleneck here created. And the only way to get in front of that bottleneck is to control your own destiny. So if you're the supplier in these situations, you look at a leader like Elon, you look at a company like Tesla, and you see where they're going. You see what you see the arc they created in the EV industry, and you see now that they're reinventing how people are going to be transported with robo taxis. So you want into robo taxi supply chain. Anybody else that's making a robo taxi is they're at, they're at much smaller volume phases. They're, they may be at a proof of concept phase. They may never enter into what you would call real high volume production. There isn't anything out there in high volume production today until you get to a Tesla Model Y that can be built every 30 seconds. There's nothing like it. It's, it's an order. It's several orders of magnitude different. So if you're these suppliers and you're looking at, okay, Tesla created this arc in EV. They're not done in EV, by the way. There's definitely a a, a stall in the growth of conventional manual driven cars. But then now that they've got this FSD deployment, they've got robo taxi deployment. <clears throat> and now they're, you know, they're ramping up on the data center side. They're, they're they are creating the AI factory that's going to power their own factories and their own products. Right. And so Dojo is going to go from eight to 10% of the training load to maybe who knows, so Hans, you're following this. It could be 50% higher next year, could be double uh, next year. But now this this purpose-built AI6 uh, system is complete inference system that can, at that point in time, in 2026, 2027, we'll be going into humanoids, we'll be going into vehicles and robo-taxis uh, of all kinds, and of course, into the data center itself. So you're, you're at if you're, if you're in the supplier's shoes and you're looking at Tesla, you're looking at Elon's leadership, the, you want to work with people that know how to create product, create industry, and manage their supply chain. And, and if I were to just break all that down, there's a lot of companies that are building stuff. There's a lot of companies with great brand names, but then they, they fall apart in managing the supply chain. They've got 200 weeks of inventory or... You, you want, or, or they, they, they say they're going to build, you know, a data center the size of whatever, uh, a certain city, and it takes them three years for, or it takes XAI or Tesla three months or less. And so if you're going to partner with somebody, you want, do you want the inventory pulled? You want a trend, you want that, you want certainty in the transaction and you want to see that arc of growth. And I think Tesla and Elon companies provide that. Yeah, Jeff. Can you just, for the audience, elaborate on why, if you're a supplier, why does it matter to you if your customer is good at pulling inventory? Yeah, you you want, if, if they're turning the inventory quickly, then you're getting paid quickly. And, and therefore, you can pay your suppliers quickly and the whole flywheel is turning. And if you set up if you set up your cash conversion cycle correctly, you could be generating cash off of this deal. If your customer cannot turn, cannot build data centers quickly enough, cannot sell cars, cannot, then they're not going to reorder. And then now you're going to have this lack of predictability in your own supply chain. And there, your own supply chain is going to slow down. The fuel for supply chains are speed, and reduction of nodes and network latency. It's all about speed. And if you have that and you have that certainty, then it's, it's mad. If you don't have that, this is where you have major, major economic breakdowns. So if you go to Samsung, right, they were stalling and stumbling a bit to get a customer assigned to this fab. They're not the number one maker of sub four nanometer node tech in terms of yield and process times. But the unique relationship here, I think some people have this a little bit wrong. They think Tesla employees mm -hmm. are gonna be running around managing production in bunny suits. Th that's not the situation I, I would envision. The situation I would envision is a very, very close working relationship between Tesla engineering design and the manufacturing design teams, the fab teams from Samsung, so they can make a very high yielding chip 
that uses the minimal amount of material and the minimal amount of process time and the minimal amount of scrap. And when you do that, because Elon, I think what Elon's seeing is in three to five years from now, there's going to be a bottleneck here created. And the only way to get in front of that bottleneck is to control your own destiny. So Tesla doesn't need to own a wafer fab. They don't need to do that. But what they can do is they could partner with somebody who has tremendous capability. And quite frankly, the, the, the culture, the Samsung culture is unbelievable from a work perspective. Um, I, I had a team in, in Korea for over a decade, some of the most amazing people you'll ever meet, uh, in terms of work ethic and so forth. So anyway, it's, it's, it's a great partnership, but Tesla is going to, is going to really blend the product development efforts. So they get something into production, very high yielding, very low process times. That's what they're looking for with this closer and closer partnership. And quite frankly, they essentially own and can prioritize this fab. So it's a very good relationship. 16 and a half billion is just the beginning. Uh, it, it's, re it's really Tesla putting their place in line saying we're a serious uh, player. And I'm sure that that money plays out over time and certain milestones on both sides. And Jeff, how do you... Uh translate or interpret Elon's claim that they're going to be, that the uh, Taylor, Texas factory is going to be dedicated to Tesla. Does that mean that Tesla is the number one customer and gets number one priority on everything, but there will be other customers? Or is that like a hundred percent of production out of Taylor, Texas is allocated to Tesla? If you're Tesla and you're Elon, as long as you can keep that fab up and running 70, 80% utilization, then you want first right of refusal to own it and prioritize it. You know, which versions of AI6 are they running? Are there certain ones that, that have certain characteristics and quality that can go for inference? Are there certain ones that have to go in the data center? You, and that, you could have other customers in, in the fab, but you ultimately want priority of what wafers are being started, what's the schedule, What's the process time? What are people working on? And as long as you can fill it up, then you, it, it is, there's a huge benefit of you, you having that. But if you can't keep it full, if you have uncertainty in your demand, and I think this is where, this is where if you're a supplier, Tesla and Elon are such an interesting, uh, it's such an interesting partner because when you sell to him, you could be again selling for uh, a data a data center application. You could be selling for a uh, a vehicle robo taxi uh, imp, uh, situation. You could be selling for um, Optimus. I mean, there's no one other. When you have that kind of redundancy as a customer, you 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 now become more valuable to your supplier, and you can actually create a, a the kind of deal that other companies cannot, you can't just come. I mean, there's companies that have tremendous amounts of cash and can go in and, and they could reserve a fab. They could totally do it. But in terms of the, the terms of that deal, when you have the kind of portfolio that Tesla has and you have the visionary CEO, you can probably get the kind of deal that others just cannot. Let, so, and let me, let me see if, if I got this right. So, so Tesla, because this AI six chip is going to be able to be used for different types of things. So they could, they put it in the robo taxi, they put it in the human or robot. Uh, they also use it for training, right? Because AI six is something that is going to be used for training. Literally, at at in at any point in time, Tesla can be like run it at full because I'm going to buy it. I might not have enough ro robots, human or robots, but I have enough cars. I may not, have, may not have enough cars and robots, but I have a training cluster, right? And so it doesn't matter what kind of, or, you know, who knows, drones down the road or whatever new thing they come out with. There's always going to be a place for them to put this chip. And so and so the, the deal is going to be just go as fast as you can. We will buy from you. Is that a good representation of what you just said? Yes. And each one of those industries ha are, are parts of growing, massively growing yes. arcs. So it's not a dying industry. It's, it's not a single industry. It's I'm coming in and I'm, I'm the captain of three or four different major industries that are on these massive growth arcs. Will it meet? 
I mean, there had to have been like a run for the door in terms of trying to get this business. I think it's really smart of Tesla also to have the geographic redundancy between Taiwan, Korea, and the U.S., and to have the supplier redundancy between TSMC and Samsung. I, I, I think it's very smart. This is very, very smart supply chain management but it, this is enterprise risk kind of level stuff if it's not done well. So it's really, really well. well met. The deal, I, I'm sure that, you know, Tesla supply chain does not get the kind of notoriety. They're just in the background getting, yeah. you know, what done. But I mean, this would have been, you know, Karn, uh, the VP of supply chain, pulling this together and his team, obviously with Elon's guidance and leadership. I mean, this had to have been like one heck of a deal and uh, again, Tesla has tremendous leverage. Elon companies have tremendous leverage. And yeah, you nailed it. It's that redundancy. That's value. That's terms in the, that is terms in the negotiation. And if you're Sam, if you're Samsung, you th- all you're thinking of is you're thinking of, can I have a highly utilized fab? Well, if I have this customer with this amount of variation, not variation, this amount of redundancy in what they're building, then I feel good about it. So was there something about this deal? I may have missed this. Is Samsung the exclusive fab or can Tesla also partner with TSMC for AI sticks onward? Tesla can do whatever they want. I mean, if, if, if Samsung can't make the part it, from a process yield perspective, time perspective, if, if you know, t- Tesla can do whatever they want in my, in my opinion, there's no, I, there, there could be some exclusive. We don't see it. We, we're obviously not going to see the contract. We don't know if there's exclusivity behind it or, or not. But even if there was exclusivity, if Samsung was not for some reason executing, Tesla should have a clause to be able to break something like that. But we haven't, we won't see that contract ever. There may be terms of it that come out at some point, but it's, we just know location. We know process node. We know, um, you know, the, the version of, of chip and we're, we, in a perfect world, we should not know much more. <laughs> Got it. Um, one of the analogies I like to think through, and you tell me if this is a good way of, of thinking about it. So Apple, they, way back in the day, they decided to go with Apple Silicon, right? They decided to many, like basically design their own chipset and optimize their uh, software to, to the hardware so that you had this incredible experience. And then for the longest time, that was their their competitive advantage was that, you know, it just works. Remember like the whole, it just works. Well, that was right. the marriage of software and hardware. Is that a good way of thinking about what Tesla's doing here with AI six, with Samsung and a, a partner with somebody that will allow them to marry soft, you know, AI software with AI hardware. Well, Tesla's had this since they've done their own, their own computer. So they've, they've, they, since they created their own Silicon team, remember this is the AI computer. This isn't the info team in, right? computer. Yeah. Since they've created that team, they've had this thing. They've had this ability where you're doing hardware design for the chip and then you're, you're actually, you're running the operating system to utilize that chip inside of your company. And then you have system software that's on the vehicle in this case. And all of that, that whole team can walk from one end of the building to the other and communicate and work together. So they get the lowest latency, they get the best performance, they get the most per square millimeter out of the silicon. And that is part of Tesla's advantage in this whole thing. It gets completely overlooked by, by analysts, but this is how you're, this is how you're getting the type of performance with computer vision and maybe a thousand or $1,200 total system for self-driving something, you know, I'm estimating something in that area, maybe even less. And that's how you're getting it. And the other ones are an, two, an order of magnitude higher times three or four uh, to deliver the same, not even deliver the same solution. So yeah, it's a sp- vertically integrating the engineering on silicon, especially as it relates to now AI inference and how important this was a four, this was seen 10 years ago by Elon and the team at Tesla. It, this is going to turn out to be one of you know the greatest moves for the company. As as Elon says, he can't buy per dollar, per value, per dollar, per square millimeter of AI4 silicon. He can't buy anything better than what he has. So 
Uh, Tesla is Apple, NVIDIA is Android. Is there a good way of thinking about this for the layman? Um, no. Uh, I mean, no, it goes much... I think it goes... I think it goes a, a bit deeper... I think it can go a bit deeper. It's close. The Tesla, the Tesla Apple relationship is close. They both developed their own, uh, call it CPU silicon. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty close. I would say it's a pretty close comparison to Apple. Nvidia, though, is is I would say it's more than Android. Um, I would say it's more than Android because there's a huge hardware component to what Nvidia provides. And Android runs agnostic of, of most. I mean, there's requirements for it to run, but Got Android's it. more more agnostic. The NVIDIA hardware solution is unbeatable at this point in time. Like there isn't there isn't a test, there isn't a dojo equivalent to what Blackwell and Blackwell Ultra is today. And as NVIDIA transitioned to Blackwell, they actually took on more and more of the system. Uh, and they've they've improved the performance of it and they've actually reduced the, the cost, the cost structure of it along the way. So you're, nobody's catching NVIDIA in this generation. And you see a lot of people have tried and they're kind of dying, you know, doing it. Nobody's catching them, uh, in this generation, but you know, within a couple of years, there'll be more and more capability. I think that obviously you see what Tesla's taking on with the training load. 